This is going to be a supplement on dividing areas such as if we're creating a fence or other kind of uh, unspecified area uh, divisions in perspective. So what we're kind of talking about there is if we kind of switch to this other file just for a moment, you know, sometimes you have an area that's defined. You have a side of a building. You want to you want to uh, work it out to where you'll be able to kind of space things in perspective so that you get this sense of uh, depth as objects get smaller and keeping them proportionally related. Well, sometimes you have a fence. Now, we, we're looking at kind of page 29 here in perspective is, is our reference point. And this is when you kind of have an unspecified area. You have this kind of length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a height line. And this is going to be the height of my fence. And I'm going to take it back to the left. So notice this is the defined height. So basically, we, as we understood with one point perspective and with two point perspective, you know, everything recedes back to the vanishing point. Now at this point, you can see I don't have a right vanishing point yet uh, because I'm not really worried about kind of the width of these things. I'm only going to deal with the depth and the height at this point. So we have this. Now we don't need to take this fence the whole way back. So we can say maybe it stops here. You know and then we kind of approach this differently but if we have kind of a specified length that we want to deal with so say for a moment that we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and drop this first section of the fences you know right about here you know so we have this kind of defined thing so how do we de determine you know how wide each of these sections are as they go back so that's the part where we kind of look back to page 29 and we need to find a center line now that's kind of the the third step in this you know this is the second step here where we've defined this initial width between the posts and now we have to go to the third one we have to find this center point so what we can do now is if we give me one second I'm going to go ahead and flatten this for you so we can change colors I'm going to go ahead and add our center line. Now why the center line is important is we use this point at the end of each section to help find the width of the next section and we do that by that intersecting diagonal line and that seems to be where most of the confusion ends up here. So we have we found our center line we know where it intersects in, the, in this width so what we do and I'm going to go ahead and flatten this one more time. We're going to change colors to kind of help keep this a little simpler. So what we do here, now this is the fourth step, is we go from the top corner and we intersect where the center line ends in the width. So right there in that intersection here, we're, we're going right through this point here is what we're aiming for. And we're cutting through and down to the bottom again. And that's how we establish the width of this next section. And all we have to do at this point, is, you know, if this was three point, we could just take this line up to the vanishing point. Uh, but in this case, it's two point. So we just want to stay horizontal with the picture plane. You know, and then we have our next section and it's defined at that point. And all we do to keep kind of dragging this out further into the background is start from the top corner again, intersect this center point here identified by the orange center line uh, through our vertical and take it down to the base of the object and at that point we've kind of done our divisions so when I'm looking at whether this has been used I'm looking for these diagonals so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pause it in a moment and I'm gonna come back in and kind of fill this object in with a different color but I'm gonna go ahead and send this out one more time so again we're starting at the top corner we're going through this intersection the center line now we, as we kind of know this orange line isn't necessarily part of the object now if you're doing a fence you may want to include it uh, just as a detail but this is only for that intersection it's the only reason we drag it out as far as we do and we can start to see this develop so let me go ahead and pause this for a moment and I'm gonna finish it off a little bit and give you a little bit of uh, kind of conclusion to this so wrapping this up this is where we left off we've kind of got our division showing how the guidelines work and it, then we can come in later and kind of darken our object in now this is that idea of if you're using uh, you know your 6b and what happens and what we're looking for in the object is this is kind of the recession of space and to show that the, when the guidelines are present we need to see these diagonals cut through the middle of each of the vertical posts and that's what we're looking for to show the guidelines if it's going from here to here it's not using that section of measurements to kind of work this out but if you have any questions let me know of course we'll talk about it some more thanks